Hey there, Brady here with your daily tennis lesson. So we're looking at difficult volleys this week, and today we're looking at how to handle pace at the net. You know, it's, it's interesting because handling pace with your volleys obviously requires great reflexes, but in terms of technique on the volley, it's really the simplest stroke you're ever gonna make when you're at the net. Let me compare it to a, to a ball where I'm seeing no pace. So Mark, go ahead and float me one up. Okay, so in my book, the longer the stroke, the bigger the step, the more that's going on, to me that generally is tougher to achieve than something that's more compact. And the cool thing about handling pace at the net is you're allowed to stay really compact. Now, obviously a couple really important things. One is perceiving the ball off the opponent's racket. When they have a big forehand, big backhand, whatever it might be, and you find yourself at the net, the longer you can see the ball coming off their strings, obviously the better. So that would be my first order of business, is getting up here, if I respect the opponent's power, I'm really paying attention to the ball coming off the racket. Now in terms of executing the shot, what we just saw with that longer stride, there's not going to be time for that. So the step, the first thing that's going to get kind of smaller is the step. When I come off my split and I see the opponent rip the shot, notice how the step is really more of just me stabilizing my leg. So let's see one here. Okay, good example right there. Granted, the ball was out to my side a little bit, so you're seeing, you're seeing some movement obviously. But again, there's no time for me to see that ball come and really stretch out to go hit it. So have it in your mind, and again, that's a, that's a reflex, that's just a reactionary thing, but know that you don't have to have that cookie cutter, that perfect outstretched step where you're really trying to establish your weight forward. You're really just trying to get your balance to the front of your body, you know, to handle the volley. So the step gets smaller. Secondly would be the stroke itself. Okay, as you can see, when I, when I take a slower ball, I'm providing the pace. If I'm going to get power on a slower volley, go ahead and give me one. I got I to gotta get the pace myself by really pushing out through the ball and extending on it. All the pace that's coming in is how, if I'm going to get power on this volley, I'm, I'm going to absorb the pace and just basically reflect it back. So a good way to think of this type of volley when you're handling pace is if you were up against a wall and, and rallying with the wall and you just rip a ball off, you know, the wall is reflecting pace. That thing's going to come back fast. And now that's essentially your job. You are the wall up here reflecting back this fast ball, okay? Which means the grip tension has to be tight. Okay, as we shorten up that stroke and try to just create a wall for the ball to hit and repel off of, if I hold the racket too loose when that occurs, you can see it. The, the pace of that shot pushes my racket back. I lost control of the grip and that ball generally pops up. And now this opponent who has some significant power is most likely going to damage me even more on the next shot. So the wall idea with the shorter stroke is supported by the idea of having a significant amount of grip pressure on the handle of the racket. So let's see that. All right, and there's a great example right there. I felt Mark's power coming in, but because I stabilized that racket so nice, the racket doesn't fall off, that ball hits the strings and really gets back on to Mark in a hurry. Okay, so everything is just shoring up. Let's, let's keep it simple. Smaller step, more compact stroke, good amount of grip pressure, and probably the last point I'd like to make before we see four or five of these in a row. This again, it, this is a tricky situation. Your opponent is putting pressure on you. Let's not compound it by trying to angle off a volley like this. I really love the idea that if he's testing my reaction skills, a good volley against power should test his reaction skills. Let's get it back to him quick and get into this exchange. 
Let's not see a fastball come in, you know, have to really handle it, and at the same time be trying to chop off a little angle off the court. Keep it simple and work the, back, work the ball back out through the tennis court. Okay, so here we go. Here's me handling pace four or five in a row. Everything's shortening up and staying nice and firm. Oh, he stretched me on the last one. He was upset with me. Okay, so there's, again, I get it. The reflexes have to be good. You gotta have time, the ability to see the ball off the opponent's strings. A lot of times that's knowing the opponent possesses power. If you know that, you will be more tuned in to them making contact. That's that first order of business. But then you can see, keep things really simple. That, sh that stroke itself, that step, that weight transfer, should all feel a lot simpler once you're actually hitting the ball than making a volley stroke on a ball that comes slower to you, okay? So that's all I got for you today. Hope that was super helpful. Please click like below this video. And if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please do so, as well as check down below me in the description of this video. You'll find the link to three free courses Mark and I have put together. I think you'll find those very helpful as well. All right, so until next time, be well, and we'll see you soon at Daily Tennis Lessons.